All right, oh, y'all. Yeah. yeah. So this interview, Tucker and T- Tucker and, and Don Jr. is is great. It, it, it is. really is. Don, I Don, Don is saying some really keen things in this. So I like we got to we got to tap into a few minutes of this and, and and see what if you guys are gonna look at it. If you haven't seen it, you're gonna see it. You know, we got to chime in. Let's tap in. We got to chime in. Let's see what they're talking about. Jim backstage. How many nights have you been home in the last month? He's like, I'm home. <laughs> Oh, and like Lexi called me, it was like, I guess yesterday morning, and they're like, they weren't sure if uh, Russell or John were able to make it to the show in Fort Lauderdale, and I live a couple hours north of there. They're, Can you do it? I'm like, of course I'll do that for Tucker. They're like, well, oh, they're able to make it now, so can you come in as like a fourth person? I'm like, can I have one night with my children, please? <laughs> For the love of God, it's been 30 days. Uh, so, you, yeah, you, out, out gracefully. You're the only non-Mormon man I know who has more children than I do, and I say that with envy. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta do what you love. Yeah, yeah, man, I was <laughs> listening to your intro. So Tucker Gekki. I have five kids. Uh-huh. I know Talk how about that his happens dogs. now, so I took up something much less vicious like politics. <laughs> So where are we? I just touted you as someone who has his finger in the pulse, and I, I happen to know for a fact that that's true. That was not a sales job. Um, where are we, do you think, in this race? Honestly, we're, we're in a place, and you know, I'm a guy that, this is my third time around. Uh, we're in a place that's better than we've ever been in a comparable position. Um, Let's go. Yeah. I feel wow. like that, too. Yeah, for you sure. Know, and, uh, Absolutely. And, and as, you know, I'm, I am the guy that's sort of willing to go into the ground and go into the parts of forgotten America. And those are sort of my friends, despite where you know, sort of I grew up. And I, I appreciate and understand the irony of it. But it's sort of the way I was always just brought up. And, you know, in 16, it was like, you still believe the media narrative. It's like, we're supposed to lose. I was like, but we're going to overperform, but we'll probably lose. In 20, I was like, man, it's actually significantly better. And just as an, like in October of 2020, I did 104 like rallies myself. Wow. So like, you know, four a day for 30 days. Like it was, but so you, but wow. you do get a pulse and you see it. And it's like, Damn. we're going to do better. And of course we did, but you know. We, we, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, this time around, Th- like. They got over a billion votes, I think, that year. Well, the, the real problem is. If they showed up with a billion votes on November 6th, they would tell us it was the freest and most fair election ever. They would present <laughs> no evidence right. of that. They would say it, and if you don't believe that you're racist or you're an insurrectionist or right. Right. some other thing that you're obviously it. not, they, they can give you something that's statistically impossible, and they'll jam it down your throats. And what's really good about this cycle is people get it. They're sick of it. But more importantly... So many are now finally emerging as unafraid to say it, right? If, if people get unafraid, if they start talking about the realities of it, if, you know, before it was like, oh, you're canceled. You know, right. none of yeah. like things True. that would have gotten you canceled two, three years ago. People are saying out and open. I mean, they're not even canceling you on social media for saying some of these things. No. They're right. still censoring the hell out of you. But it- I will say that that has changed. A year ago, yeah, just yeah. Su- just strong enough support for for Trump. Mm-hmm. You you would you would be on the on the low key black back end black ball list. Yeah, now banning. they realize you got too many people in support. We can't do that no mm-hmm. more. And too okay. many big influencers. Right. It, it's just different. So the atmosphere uh, it, it is so good. It feels so strong. Uh, unlike anything I've experienced so far. Really? Even compared to 2020? Yeah, by the way, now, even compared to, like, closer to the election, because, I mean, I, I've been, you know, on the road now for weeks. Uh, you know, even in June, I was like, wow. I mean, pe- people have had enough. They, they're, they're sick of being lied to. They're sick of being told, no, no, Bidenomics is working for you. And I know it for myself. Because Listen, I'm, I've been blessed. I know that I don't pretend to be otherwise, but I think I told you the story one time we were hanging out and I was like, I was coming back from a fishing trip with my son. He was 10 and 14 at the time, two, like last year. And we went to McDonald's and it was my 10 year old, my 14 year old and me, and it was $48. And I was like, holy crap. That's true. <laughs> if Donald Trump Jr. has sticker shock, folks. <laughs> I'm like, I agree. $25. That seems what ridiculous. Could have went out somewhere. Else. I'm what, what did off. you get? Do you mind if I ask? You know, I don't even remember. It didn't matter. It was just, <laughs> right. it wasn't like excessive. But if I'm sitting there, be like, I don't get it. You know, I'm not, and again, I'm not like you see it on the Sunday shows. You know, some liberal, my three week old baby 
was recently crying about nuclear proliferation on the Korean Peninsula. Like, they're virtue signaling. Like, I'm not pretending it's going to change my habits. Or it, it, I, I'm lucky enough that it doesn't have to. It doesn't affect me. But I know it affects some family that's making fifty thousand dollars a year, sixty thousand dollars a year. If I'm pissed off, they're livid, and yes. and they've had enough of being told you just have to accept it. It's going to be good while we send another two hundred fifty billion to Come Ukraine on. to fight a war right. that on. no one has articulated to me. Or At you. all, nobody knows what what's going on over there. What's going on over there? What y'all doing tomorrow? Steel. Zelensky like this. I do this now. Dancing. You know, I don't, I don't really make any money in politics, but like I, I'm sort of just like I'm a fighter. I'm like I'm in the game now. I, no one's articulate. Like, we must do this. I go, but why? What does victory look like? Well, we don't really know. Well, so is it, does it stop at a trillion dollars? Ten trillion? Hold when the interest to on our them. debt is now a trillion dollars a year, just the interest on the money that we borrow, the so interest. we can send Pakistan twenty-five million dollars to fund transgender programs in their schools. It's like, oh my god. Kamala. Oh my God! See what I mean? Everyone party. knows it. Like everyone is sick of it. It has to stop. Wow. Okay, can I ask you a question? So you you do travel and speak to audiences more than anybody, I, more than anybody actually that I'm aware of, and you always have in Washington, where I spent my whole life until recently. I don't think there are four Republicans in the House who've asked the questions about Ukraine than you have. That's wild. Do you yeah. ever meet an audience that is like, no, we really need to keep going funding this war in Ukraine? So I, I, I do this in a lot of the speeches. I'll, I'll do it right here because I, I haven't done it in a while. You know, and I've had two responses. And so let's say over the last year, I've spoken to 50, 60,000 people probably, right? You know, opening up for DJT, a rally, a group of 300 people here. That may be 10,000, 5,000. This is 10,000, whatever it is. And I do it. You know, Come on. show of hands... Raise your hand if Ukraine is a top 10 priority for you in your it life. Absolutely right. not. It's Period. not. Period. And I'll do it. I'll, like, if it is, I'll give you the mic. Period. We should not. That's Period. crazy. Period. That's crazy. Um, think about all the money that we flush over there, how much we could better this country, how things will be so top tier. Think about how if we were flushing money onto our country, how just about everybody could be a homeowner. You think about it. If you're... Because your interest rate be low, the cost of houses wouldn't be crazy mm -mm. because we won't overspend, but we'd be putting into the things that we need here. I just think about how life would be. It'd be totally different. Exactly. How about a top three? It doesn't exist. I found two people. <laughs> two people. Of now, Over let's call it 65,000 people. people that I speak to wow. weekly. Wow. That was... It was not top three, but it was top ten. First guy, sir. Why? why? I am from Kiev, Ukraine. I, I was like, okay, fine. <laughs> I'm going to give you a pass. And the other was a guy that's like a Beltway warmonger. I was like, so you're on the board of Raytheon or something like that? He was like, well, no, not exactly. I was like, <laughs> right. Northrop Grumman? He just walks away. You know, it, and, I, and yet, I get the calls. By the way, I'll... I'll What's nice about me, I, I'm not a politician, so I'll call out both sides. I get the calls from Republicans. Hey, Don, can you not go so tough on the Ukraine? Because, you know, some of that money is getting funneled back to, like, you know, a missile maker. And I was like, wait, wait, wait. I'm all about American businesses. Like, our family's done that before we got sued to, you know, oblivion. Like, we, we've done this. I get it. I want to support American business. Not if it's just for abject death for no reason around the world. Like, I'm not there to support American business in genocide. Come on. Come on. And like, I talk to these guys. I'm like, you're making trillion dollar decisions. Have you surveyed like your constituents? Right. And they're like, well, no, but you know, but I'm sure they took six figures from Raytheon. And so therefore, you know, they're on, they're on the team. You know, they should get like sponsorship things. Who's, who are, whose payroll are you on? Because it's, it's shocking to me that a guy like me who grew up on the 70th floor of Trump Tower in Manhattan, again, I don't forget that. I don't pretend it didn't happen. I'm like very self-aware that way. But it's like, how do I know this and you don't? Like you right. live there. Exactly. Come you on. live amongst these people. You literally chose to represent yes. your district. Mm -hmm. I was there last week and you have no idea what they actually stand for. And it's mm. disgusting. Wow. That it, that, just thank you. Thank you for that. So... I think that one of the great promises of a second Trump term 
is that the, the party that nominated him will really change and change yeah. in a specific way. It will represent its voters. The Democratic Party actually kind of represents its voters. If you're into That's child true. castration, mm -hmm. you've got a party. Yep. But why wouldn't normal That's people real. have a political party that represents them? That's real. I, I don't know how it got that way. And again, it's sort of amazing, right? Because you would, you would think they'd be able to get voted out. But you know what? There's... Right. No one's ever had to get Obama. sort of being unafraid, right? They, they can go to their Obama. little constituents and they go speak to a room, you know, other than maybe DJT. No one can assemble a room like this in conservative politics or, frankly, in politics. But they go home and they speak to a group of five people that shows up and they tell them everything they want to hear. Everything. I believe And then it. they go to D.C. and they vote opposite. Mm. Because there's no consequence that's, that's in D.C. You can be like 75% Republican. Hell, you could be 90% Republican. As long as when it actually matters, you fold. It's an easy existence to be a weak Republican in Washington, D.C. Wow. You know, you know the Washington Post isn't going to do the hit piece on you. Ugh. You know, I, I'd say they'd get invited to the cool person Christmas party, but we can't say Christmas party in D.C., right? That's, wow. So, you know, That's crazy. They can get away with a lot. And so you, you have people that... They get away with it. They lie and they no, that guy's really for me. I'm like, oh, but have you looked at his voting record? Mm. No, he's just the Republican. It's sort of like why we end up with, why are the weakest Republicans in the most conservative states? Oh. Right? If you look at our- I'm like, speaking to you, Dan Crenshaw. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you go through the list. I mean, whether it's Oklahoma, that you, you have senators that are like, I'm like- Th That's real. See, this is what I like. Okay. You know, they're, they're, they're not only just calling out the left, but they're calling out people on the right that's not raising the bar. Yeah. And that's that's real. That's that's real. That's real. With Republicans like those, Utah, you know, with Republicans like Mitt Romney, who needs Democrats? Huh. But in the strong conservative hmm. states, the Democrats sort of get together. They do this really well. And they say, hey, we're going to just forget about the Democrat. We're just going to install the weakest Republican. Half the Republicans don't know the difference. They think that's the guy that's leading, so we'll just vote for him. And you end up with conservative states that have the least conservative leadership in the world. And so, so much of this is really an education process. People have to understand and start paying attention. And again, that's right. I think it takes... Unfortunately, it's sort of whether it's addiction or otherwise, sometimes you have to hit rock bottom. Mm. And I think the American populace watching what we've been told has been a great success over the last three and a half years <laughs> under Joe Biden, that's the rock bottom we actually needed to get people woken up and engaged in politics. Right. We could have never done so something true. like this. So true. Yeah. Five years ago, 10 years ago, it didn't exist. You got four people in a room. People are fed up. Raise your hand if you're fed up. I am. Put my hand up. But I don't, I, you may be missing something important, and I'm getting this directly from Ben Stiller. <laughs> the ben election Stiller. of Kamala Harris will be, and I'm quoting now, the change we need. No, it, they thought that was Obama. By the way, Please. just so we're clear, say it with Kamala that Obama. Harris has changed a lot. Unfortunately, it's all been for the worse. Yeah. What? Yeah, what's, come on. What's amazing about this whole thing, I'm watching the media. She's the candidate of change. I go, She's the vice president. Like, she has been there. They want change. Like, they, they cut and paste Joe Biden's policies when they finally, after a month of being the nominee, put up her policies. Wow. And they forgot to cover up the source code to say it's the same thing. Like, Dang. what change is that going to be? Like, she's the vice president to the most absentee president in the history of the United States. Come yeah. on. Come Where on. is he now? Beyond... <laughs> Beyond the dementia, <laughs> beyond the basics of the dementia, he spent 40 plus percent of his presidency on vacation. She, if she wanted to do something, she had the opportunity exactly. to literally do anything. Exactly. She could have taken the reins. And by the way, Joe Biden said that the other day. What was it? On the what clowns on the view. What when he was like, no, I delegated everything to her. I trust her. She totally ran with everything. <laughs> and so the media is like, it's like she has a clean slate. It's like she's never been in politics. She's literally the daughter of a Marxist professor who is a San Francisco liberal who was rated the most radically left person in the United States Senate, left mm. of Bernie Sanders because at least I think he kind of believed in at least American jobs. She couldn't care less. And they're like, no, no, no. Her political her career started three weeks ago when, when she won one, uh, you know, one, we use that word loosely Given. in the word Given. In democracy, they throw it around. She got zero votes, but, you know, won this position. I'm like, 
you saw it during the base. I'm not anti-gun. Like 10 days before, mandatory gun buyback program. They wanted, to, that's part of their platform. Just, she's not for taking part, your guns, but like a mandatory program. The key word in this is mandatory. Mandatory, that's right. Seems like you're actually really for taking your guns. Then four days later, she, oh, we, she wants to about institute she got an guns. assault weapons ban. Man, please. You know, the media will tell you whatever you need to hear to get you to vote that way. She right. will tell you anything. I mean, she's going to crack down on the border. I mean, she was the border czar. I got fact-checked a couple of, you know, months ago when she was talking about it because I was like, she's the border czar. If she wanted to do something about the border, they had the materials there, all the labor was paid for. They just said to the workers, they said, take the contract we gave you, it doesn't matter, leave the materials, we'll sell it for pennies on the dollar. Now she's going to be tough on the border? Like, like, the fact that we still fall for it, we saw it during the Biden administration in the 2020 Democrat debates. Who's against fracking and American energy independence? Everyone's hand went up. Mm. You know, a couple months later, the debate, debate with my father, I would never do that. It's like, but you raised your hand like three weeks ago that you would do it. What do you, like, right. you would never do it? And the media, of course he would never do it because they knew not that it would be the end of the American energy sector, tens of thousands of good paying jobs for hardworking Americans, energy independence, and the national security that comes with it. They knew it would cost them votes in Pennsylvania and Michigan. And, and then on day one, Keystone Pipeline, first yeah. executive order. They just, they got rid of it all. See? They'll tell you anything you need to hear. That's right. So yeah. why would the media, I mean, I, I guess I've been in the media it's my whole life, done. but hmm. there's a self-respect problem at a certain point if you're parroting the dumbest possible talking points that no child would believe, but you're doing it with a straight face if you're David Muir, <laughs> who is, judging by his abs, a great reporter. Um, but why? <laughs> Why are they willing to be used as basically prostitutes by a political party? Again, they're just, they've become part of a machine. They're not journalists, they're just propagandists. They're all on that team. There's a reason, what is it, 97% of all political donations from the media go to the Democrat Party. You know, mm, they're not the ones that are dealing with that. the consequences of illegal immigration, the rape. I mean, the statistics that came out, what was it, yesterday, right? 16,000 rapists led into the country as part of this flow, like 13,000 murderers. They're reporting on it. That means they know. That's right. They knew and they let them in anyway. That's I mean, right. think about the insanity of that. What civilization could survive being like, well, you know, it's, it's a rapist and a murderer, but fine, we're going to give this one a pass. Mm -hmm. I mean, that came out yesterday. And this thing, it just keeps getting better and better as, as they discuss this. All these key points were so, so good. But I'm really going to say I really like the fact that they address, he addressed. And that's what I've said, too. There are people on both sides that could could do a better job in what they do mm -hmm. however we know the leader that we want to support who can help get his side cleaned up and pay attention because he is king on letting people go who are incompetent mm -hmm. who are not doing a good job don't know what the heck they doing mm -hmm. and You're you know fine. exactly he yeah. will have you replaced demoted i don't know how it really goes about you know congress and all that but can you fire just fire congress i don't know how that works but i know I, it may be a process of, of having them ousted i i don't know but okay. nevertheless okay where you going so i mean what else do you have to say about <laughs> i don't know what you're talking about but um i'm talking yeah, about the fact that don jr was talking about republicans yeah, republicans but, on but, the on but, the right but i don't know what you're talking about we're with firing. Not, I, don't, I don't get you that's what i'm saying you know he was just talking about some they could do better there's some that still could do better as on the right uh, are you on the him left going and firing the republicans that are in those seats yeah i mean i don't know if that's how that works in the house when yeah. you can just fire a, you know um a statesman or whatever but i'm sure there's a due process but nevertheless we know that it's the leader who's going to come in and, and reevaluate his key players all right that was great y'all Don junior tucker it was good what do you think about it have you seen it are you going to watch it i think you should because he's bringing up some very key important issues and and facts stuff that we need to be aware of all right now 2024 be more talk less we'll see you on the next one yeah